fall is here in Colorado, and the kokanee are going to start running up the streams and rivers here really soon. These are landlocked sockeye salmon, and it's one of my favorites to fish for come October. So let's tie up some flies specific for the kokanee. First off, we're going to do a San Juan worm. This is very simple to tie, just takes a few ingredients, and does not take a lot of skill to tie it. First off, when it comes to the hook, I prefer to use a heavy weight hook. Not a light one like on top, but if you look at the bottom hooks, they're much heavier. So let's get a hook into our vise. Very simple to tie. All we need is a little red thread, a hook to tie onto, and some ultra chenille. So we're just going to tie in our thread on the hook itself, and then we're going to wrap the hook shank with our red thread. Just going to cover up that black color of the hook itself. So from the underside, it, the uh, hook is red as well. So we've got a nice red ultra chenille. It's fairly small in diameter. And we want a piece that's roughly an inch and a half, two inches long. We can always trim it down at the end. So we're just going to cut a little piece off here. And then what we want to do is we want to singe both ends. That's how we're going to keep it from unraveling and falling apart when we fish with it. So we just give it a little singe, tap the ends with our fingers, and we're good to go. We're going to tie it in. We're going to start from the back and just give it a couple wraps over top of it. Just lock it in there. Then we're going to pull a front piece, wrap along the hook shank. Then we're going to loop it forward and tie in the chenille again. Give it a few wraps, pull it back again, move our thread towards the eye, and then we're going to tie it in a third time. See how easy this is? And as you can see, we kind of have three segments there where we tied it into the hook. So we're just going to pull it back, give it a few wraps up against the eye, and then we'll whip finish it off. Whip finish is just a knot to keep the thread from coming unraveled while we're fish fishing. We can trim our thread. And we have a complete San Juan worm. Now we can do a slight variation on the San Juan with a little bead. I've got these little red brass beads. And what this does is adds a little bit of weight to the San Juan worm itself. So the fly can get down to the fish. You want to be fishing the San Juan worm pretty deep, right along the bottom. You want it to touch bottom from time to time, kind of be rolling around, kind of like a night crawler would be if you threw it into a stream or a river. So I'm going to take the bead and I'm just going to string it on the hook itself. We'll go ahead and affix that right into the vise real quick. And then we'll tie our thread in behind the bead. You see the bead slides back and forth. 
but we'll go ahead and affix our thread in place. And again, we're just going to tie it in, clip off the tag end, and then we're going to wrap the thread around the whole shaft of the hook. We're going to use our same chenille that we used last time. We're going to do the exact same method, about an inch and a half, two inches, inch and three quarters, whatever you're comfortable with. And we're going to do the same thing we did last time. We're going to singe both ends, tamp them down just to keep the chenille from unraveling while we're catching loads and loads of our kokanee here in a couple weeks. Now from all the way in the back, we're going to tie in our chenille, lock it in, give it a couple wraps, just like we did last time. We're going to pull it back, give it a wrap or two, and then we're going to pull a bead all the way back right up against the chenille. We're going to wrap over the bead, give it a couple wraps ahead of the bead just to kind of lock it in there. And then we're going to tie in the chenille again, just like we did last time. We're going to pull it back. And now, as you can see, there's not a lot of thread on the shaft of the hook because that's where the bead was sitting last time. So we're going to wrap that thread around the shaft of the hook, and then we're going to tie it in for the third time. And I give it a few wraps up at the head. And we'll go ahead and web finish this baby off. Okay. And we can trim the thread. And now we've got a completed San Juan worm with a bead in it. The bead will help weight it down and get it down to the fish. I'll use this in a little swifter water where I want to get help get that fly down to the kokanee. Now my favorite fly for fish in the uh, kokanee, landlocked, sockeye salmon are called gummy eggs. They come in various sizes and diameter and a few different shades of orange to red. Now I'll use the different sizes and shades depending on the water cover, color itself. And murky water I'll size up or go to a brighter shade. Now this is really simple. They come strung. They're made out of like silicone or something like that. And you just cut each individual egg off. Again, I like to use a nice heavy hook because we want this to sink down and we want these eggs to roll along the bottom when we fish them. So you just simply cut it off, string it on the hook, and it is that simple. And that catches the kokanee like crazy. So here's a slight variation on our gummy egg fly. We're going to do the same thing. Just cut one of the eggs off. We're going to string it right on the hook itself. Simple and easy. You just string it on here just like you would a salmon egg onto a regular hook if you're a fishing bait. Now we're going to put it in the vise and do one small addition. What 
I'd like to do is add just a little bit of marabou to the fly. And what this does is this might simulate, you know, some sperm from an egg that has been fertilized, something like that. But I like to add just a few strands of this, and I think this helps with hook setting. Now you're asking me why this would help with setting the hook. Well, I think that these strands of marabou can get stuck in the sockeye's teeth. I'm going to show you a photo of the sockeye's teeth, and you can see exactly what I'm talking about. They are snaggle tooth, they are big, they are nasty, and I think this can help keep it in their mouth just a little bit longer on occasion and increase your likelihood of hooking up. So I'm just going to finish tying off the head here. If I have to pull back on that marabou as we tie off the head. And then we'll just give it a quick whip finish. Now again, not many strands of the marabou. We don't want it to overtake that fly. We just want it to help out when we're actually fishing. So we'll tie it off. Trim it up. And we're good to go. Another slight variation to our gummy egg fly is we can add one of these red brass beads. This will help weigh down our fly to get it down rolling around the bottom. We simply string on one of the beads first, and then we string on one of the gummy eggs. You can see how much work it is to get these eggs on so you don't have to worry about them sliding off while you're casting them. We'll just push that forward up against the bead and we've got it. That simple. So we've got three variations to our gummy flies. We've got the bead headed one to help weight it down. We've got our standard one and we've got one with just a few strands of marabou. And we have one final fly that I'd like to go over today. And this is very similar to the San Juan worm, except it uses a silicone rubber material instead of the ultra chenille. This is called a squirmy wormy. Tying it is exactly the same as our San Juan worm. Just tie our thread in, clip off our tag end, and we will tie it all the way back, covering the whole shank of the hook. Tying it from here on is the same as tying the San Juan worm. The only problem is, is when you tighten up on this thread, is the material, that silicone material, kind of wants to twist around. So you have to be careful of that. Other than that, it's exactly the same. We're going to make a couple segments here, tie it in in three spots, so we'll have two segments of the body itself. Thread forward, tie it in the final time. See how it's trying to twist around? And then we'll tie off the head, give it a quick whip finish. Just whip it up here real quick. And then we can Cut off our tag end. Now I left the squirmy wormy extra long. I'll just cut it to the length I want now. I 
and we're good to go. Another option is we can also use the red brass beads in there to help weigh it down, just like we did with the San Juan worm. So this is what we tied up real quick, and we're ready to go hit the dream stream of the Gunnison and go catch some kokanees. I want to thank you for joining us today, and if you can, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and thanks for joining us.